guys, Rebecca, owner of Holy Rustic DIY Studio here, and it is finally time to paint flamingos. So let me know if you are with me tonight. Let me know if you're going to be painting or stringing. And also let me know if you can't hear me because I do still have a machine running, um, cutting your kits. <laughs> it wasn't quite finished and I didn't want to stop it so it's just paused. So let me know if I need to turn that off. Let me know if you can hear me. Let me know if you're painting. Let me know if you're stringing. What's going on with you? Okay, so this is how it's going to happen tonight. I am going to start painting with all of you. So we're all going to paint the background whether you're doing the paint or if you're doing the paint and string. Um, once we get the background done, then I'm going to get you string art people started on the nailing because I've already done that. Mine's ready to go. Okay. While I paint the flamingo with the painters. Okay. So while I'm painting the flamingo, you're going to be nailing. And then once I wrap up with the painters, I'll come back to you string art people and um, we will work on the string. Hopefully you're done nailing by the time we're done. Hi Paula, how are you? Can you hear me okay? I still have that machine running. I'm always nervous that y'all can't hear me. All right, let me get my finished one out of the way and let's jump right in on our canvas. Okay, so your supply list um, asked for an 11 by 14. You could probably do an 8 by 10, but it'd be pushing it a little bit. Um, let's see. Make sure my comments are loading. All right, let me know if you're painting or stringing. Let me know if you're here, what your plans are. Um, okay, good. I'm glad. It seems really loud to me, but that's because I'm right here with it. So... Okay, so what we're gonna do is take your um, tracing paper, if you're using the tracer, and just put your tracing paper underneath it. So you're going to um, put your flamingo kind of down towards the bottom. So you want your legs at the bottom of the canvas. <laughs> your flamingo legs. Don't put your legs at the bottom of the canvas. All right, let me move this up a little bit. Okay. So I'm gonna position this in the center from left to right, but at the bottom, and I'm gonna trace it. So you can use a pencil or you can use a pen. I think I'm gonna use a pen just to make it a little darker on the canvas because once we start painting, um, I wanna still be able to see those lines. Hi Lisa, hi Paula, we got a couple Paulas. Welcome. All right, so if you missed it, we're all starting out with by painting the background so we're all on the same page right now and um, i did notice the supply list i'm gonna go ahead and start tracing okay so i have my tracing paper and then my um printed paper and i'm just gonna go around and trace this and i'm using a pen so that it's darker okay so hopefully everybody understood on the supply list if you are doing string art you need to be using wood <laughs> okay we're not gonna be nailing canvas um, we did color code the supply list, but we did not um, distinguish the fact that if you if you want to do the string art, you need to have a piece of wood. All right, if you're doing paint only, you can do canvas or wood. And it says 11 by 14, so I do have an 11 by 14 canvas, but the wood that I grabbed for my string art is actually um, a 10 by 12, I think. All right, so see what happens? It's transferred onto the canvas. Hey, Kimberly. Yeah, you're doing paint and string. So we're all starting together on the background. I'm super excited about this because I've not, and um, this is the first flamingo that I've done in string art. And y'all know I love string art. So I paint because y'all love it, but I paint and string because I love it. <laughs> string art is my favorite. All right, so I've transferred the image onto my canvas with this pen. The leg looks a little wonky, but that's okay. We're gonna paint over it, so it doesn't really matter how it traced. Just make sure you got all your pieces on there. All right, 
so again, this is 11 by 14. There's a lot of extra space up here, but that's okay. You could do an eight by 10, but it is going to be um, a little small. It's gonna be pushing it. You love flamingos, aren't they fun? It's, it's so summery. Just makes me think of warm weather and beaches. <laughs> You're gonna bring your board to me, okay. <laughs> It'd be better if you just did it, Lisa. <laughs> I'm not sure I could fit it in right now. <laughs> All right, so, um, and then this is an 11 by 12. So really 11 by 12 is like the perfect size. But um, since we're on canvas, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna work our way from the top down on the background. And I don't give you a whole lot of specifics about paints because I don't want you to ever get hung up on paint colors. Because honestly, I've never really used the same colors every time. I just grab something similar and it is what it is. <laughs> so we're gonna, I'm gonna start with my um, bright blue. So this one is a folk art color cobalt. Um, and then I need some white. So go ahead and get your blue and your white. And then I'm gonna use a flat brush all right, um, you can use whatever brushes you want. Again, I don't want you to get hung up on that, that kind of stuff. So whatever feels comfortable to you is what I want you to use, okay? All right, so we wanna start with our dark blue and we're gonna fade the sky down and we're gonna bring it down to about um, a little above the halfway mark on our canvas. So at the top, I'm gonna go ahead and dip in straight blue first. Yes, you will be able to watch it on replay. So we'll keep it in the group for you. All right, so straight dark blue at the top. I'm using a flat brush. I would do maybe like an inch. All right, go ahead and get the top and those little um, sides. I love this color. I've been craving the ocean lately, and I'm pretty sure this is not going to help. <laughs> this is going to make me want to see it more. I might have to take a trip. Alright, so we're doing this. Whether you are painting or stringing, you should be doing this with me. If you're using wood, same process. Okay? Alright, so we have that dark blue across the top. I clearly didn't. Well, I might have got enough. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to dip in my blue again and I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white. Okay, so I have both colors on my brush and we're, we're kind of doing like an ombre effect. Okay, so we're, we're just like blending this. We want our sky to get lighter as it gets closer to the ocean. So as I move down the canvas, <laughs> I wish you could, Lisa. Yeah, 13 days, you're going to the beach. Woohoo! Jealous! <laughs> I wish I could fit in your suitcase. All right, the further down you get on the canvas, the more white and the less blue you want to pick up. Okay, so we're starting with straight blue at the top. Don't forget your sides. If I'm terrible about forgetting my sides, so I have to do them while I'm thinking about it or or I get completely finished and they're not. So go ahead and get your sides if you want those painted. Again, as we go down, we're just picking up less blue, more white. So the proportion of our colors is changing as we move down the board. Okay, I got way too much blue there. I want it to be almost white by the time we get down to about the halfway mark. Okay, so now since I already have blue in my brush, I'm gonna paint, I'm gonna pick up only white. And then I should start getting super light as I go down. Okay. Now I want to go down to about the halfway mark on the beak. I'm hoping we'll still be able to see these lines. I um we can go and back and trace the flamingo after we get the background done and we may have to if we can't see our lines 
but if it's not super dry, the tracing paper will leave the black marks on the background, and so I'm trying to avoid that. That's why we traced it first. Hey, Tamara, how are you? Are you painting or stringing tonight? Or both? <laughs> All right, so see how we have this faded sky, okay? It starts out dark and it gets light. So that just reminds you of ocean sky. <laughs> All right, so I stopped about halfway down the beak. I'm gonna go ahead and get my sides now. I don't know, it, it bothers me to get done with the whole painting and then I look and I'm, I forgot my sides. It never fails. <laughs> um, we're painting the backgrounds together. If you, if you missed um, me talking about this, we're all going to paint. And then while I continue with the painted flamingo with the painters, um, you string art people are going to nail your board. Um, and then... By the time I'm done with the painters, hopefully you're done nailing your board and then I'll string with you because I've already got my board ready to go, okay? So you're gonna be nailing while I'm painting the flamingo. That way we can get everybody, everybody in tonight. Okay, so I just wanna make sure that this is straight. So just kinda eyeball it. It doesn't have to be perfect. But it should be pretty much just white here. Okay. So just white right here. Oh, that's that's nice. Got your wine on your porch. It's probably it's a beautiful day for that. Or it is here. Not that I've enjoyed, not that I really know. I'm just seeing it out of the window today. We're packing craft kits like crazy. We're trying to get those BOGOs out in time for next week. Um, I think we, if you ordered the BOGO kit, I think we've finally got them all cut. So the last of the BOGO kits will go out tomorrow. Who's got their BOGO kits already? We've sent a bunch of them. Um, so we'll be painting that on our main page next week. That looks really crooked to me. Let me turn this sideways. All right, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I don't wanna look like I'm, I'm drinking wine with Lisa here. <laughs> right, Lisa? All right. So just ballpark straight line. Okay, I'm done here. Hi, Kat, welcome, that's okay. Yeah, the BOGO is going to be fun. That's the lemonade um, kit. So we vote on a BOGO kit every month. And that's <laughs> there was quite a competition going on between the lemonade and the um, flip-flops this time. There, it was actually tied, so we had to do a second vote. And the lemonade won by a long shot. I tell you what, though, that thing takes a long time to cut. So we've been... Um, Cutting non-stop, trying to get those out. All right, I have rinsed my brush and now we are moving on to the um, water. Okay, so rinse your brush. I'm just gonna stick with the same um, flat brush for most of this painting. Yeah, I may have to retrace that. It's gonna be really hard to see it. I was hoping it would be it would be okay, but I think once we use the um, turquoise or the teal color, it's gonna be pretty covered up. Okay, so the next color is the um, teal, which I'm using the Apple Barrel, La Apple Barrel Laguna, and we're gonna do the same thing that we did um, on the sky. Hi, Zazina, that's pretty. I'm so glad you're excited to be here. Yay. Um, yeah, here we are. You didn't miss it. <laughs> you're right on time. All right, so, um, yep, that's fine. You can watch and paint later. The replay will be here uh, whenever you're ready. Okay, so we're going straight into the teal now. 
And right where I left off with the sky, I'm just gonna take that flat brush and just uh, run it along right up against the blue. So just like with the sky, I'm starting with straight teal. And then as I move down, I'm gonna start picking up the white. Okay, so I want it solid, solid teal at the top. Get my sides here. And then I'll start mixing in the white. <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> Lisa. <laughs> I didn't say I didn't like drinking wine. I just said that I didn't want my horizon to look like I was currently drinking <laughs> <laughs> drinking wine with you <laughs> oh my goodness you're funny all right so I'm gonna pick up a little bit I'm out of white let me get some more white we're actually gonna be using quite a bit of white so all right so teal and a little bit of white and just like with um, let me get a little more white. So just like with the, the blue, we're just mixing that in. Actually, I think I can see the flamingo even better than on the teal better than I could the blue. Um, we do want to go ahead and give ourselves um, kind of a shoreline here. So right about where right about where below the knee I guess you call it a knee on a flamingo I don't know um just kind of do a wavy line there and that's gonna um give us a shoreline here all right and then we'll just go back to um painting so I'm gonna do more white than teal now so we're kind of kind of fading this out so it's it's um, basically like an ombre effect and same thing as the blue so see how I'm getting way more white as I get closer to the bottom let me go ahead and do my sides you're gonna hear me talk about sides a lot because I have to remind myself that they're there <laughs> it's like um we did the a barn painting at the winery this weekend and even by the time I got the example there I still had missed one of my sides <laughs> all right so I'm um, about I'm about to the point where I'm just picking up white white only in my brush okay Who's doing string art for the first time tonight? Anybody? Any first time stringers here? All right, so I'm basically all white right now. on my brush. Whoops, let me just throw my brush. I was slinging nails earlier today. You hit that, that knot in those woods and it doesn't, it doesn't like to stay. So we are done with the water and now we're going to do our sand. Oh, is this your first time, Kimberly, on the string art? Well, be careful, it's addicting. <laughs> it probably won't be your last. It's my favorite. discovered string art and hooked and here we are years later 
Okay, so now we want our sand color paint, and I'm using the Apple Barrel Khaki. Um, any kind of tan or light brown will work. You can you can take a brown and mix it with white if you want until you get the color that you like. Um, this it, we will keep the video on replay in the group for a while. Oh, how fun, Marie! You got your kids with us tonight. Hi, hi, Camden and Sadie. Y'all painting flamingos with us? Look, I got distracted and dipped in the white. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess we could have white sand, but we are not going to. We're gonna do the um, khaki color on the shoreline here, the sand. So just a straight tan or khaki, whatever color you're using, just paint it here at the bottom where you uh, had that line. Just follow that along. Uh, oh, the video, Lisa, yeah, the video will be up for a while. Oh, that's exciting. Are y'all all painting your own canvas, Marie, or are you working together to paint one? just khaki all across the bottom got our sand wish I had my feet in the my toes in the sand right now that would be nice we'll just have to settle for the next best thing <laughs> which is painting the sand Good. so we are almost done with the background Please, yeah, for sure. I'm gonna have have to schedule a trip. I was trying to talk to my talk my husband into um going to the beach for New Year's this year. Cause you know, Christmas season is crazy busy for us and by the time Christmas is over we can like barely move. So <laughs> we try to take um vacation around that time, but he's convinced me it's gonna be too cold. And I really don't like to be cold. So I'm afraid I'll ruin my beach trip if I go in the winter. What do y'all think? Have y'all been to the beach in the winter time? I haven't done it. So I don't know. Oh, you're each doing your own canvas. How fun. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch to a smaller uh, flat brush. So like a fourth inch or something like that. Um, and I'm just going to dip in my white. And just right along the um, right along here where the ocean and the sand meet, I'm just going to take my brush and do some white. Just right here along the edge. That water's hitting the beach there. Okay, and it's still a little wet, so you're gonna pick up some of that khaki, that's okay. Let's smooth that out a little bit. Okay, all right, and we're done with the background. Sarasota at Christmas, hmm. Sarasota, it, I guess that's pretty far south, right, in Florida? Yeah, if you said go far enough south, it won't be cold. Um, I think one we were looking at was like the Carolinas maybe. Um, but yeah, I didn't think about going super south Florida. That would work. I wish we lived close enough to a beach where we could take our dog though. We really like to travel with our big white German Shepherd. And all the beaches are so far away from us, we can't take them. Although we did take him, well, unless we 
unless we drive, but that's a long trip with a dog. We took him to, um, I'm just letting this dry for a minute. We took him to uh, Lake Michigan, one of the beaches there. <laughs> we went to a dog beach and he was, he was like the biggest dog on the beach and he was also the biggest, most terrified animal on the beach. He did not like the water. He did not like the ocean. <laughs> He did not like the other dogs. It was it's pretty sad. He's like the biggest baby ever. <laughs> he should be terrifying to every every all everyone around him, but he is terrified of everything. It makes no sense. <laughs> Miami Beach in the winter. You've been there in the winter. Okay, gotcha. South of Tampa. I'm trying to think of what the furthest south I've been. Not very, cause like we, cause like I don't know if I said this, but I grew up in Southern Alabama, so we spent all our time in the Panhandle. So I was at the beach like every weekend, but it, you know we never really left the Panhandle. And so when I vacation, that's usually what I go back to because I know it. Um. All right, so we are done with this part. So if you are stringing. Um, I'm trying to decide if we should do our leaves first or after we string. I think it'll be hard to do the leaves once we get it strong. Where are y'all at on painting? If you're painting with me, are you caught up? Let me know where we are. You know, I've never, I've never thought about going to the beach in Louisiana. I've never even heard of Grand Isle. I'll have to look that up. Thanks, Winnie. You are seven miles from Lake Michigan shoreline. Are you on the Wisconsin side or the other side? We spent um, we spent like a week on the east side, I have to think northeast. East side, I guess it's east if you're looking at a map. It's east, yeah. About a week last summer, right on the water. It was nice, except Michigan was super shut down last summer. So there really wasn't anything to do. And that was the first time that we um, vacationed there. You're caught up? Okay. All right. Okay, so we just really need this to dry. All right, I'm going to move this canvas and talk to you all that are string, stringing with me. Um, so painters, just hold tight for a minute. Let me find my... Okay. So if you are um, doing the string, let me tell you something real quick. Go ahead, you'll want to cut, you'll want to trim out your um, flamingo template. Born and raised in Michigan, huh? It gets too cold there, I couldn't live there. I, my Alabama blood cannot stand some cold weather. I just, I'm always freezing <laughs> and I do not like the snow. I don't care how long I've lived up here, what, like 20 years? No, snow is not my thing. I will never get used to it. <laughs> so I definitely could not go further north. I, I need to go further south. That's why I went to Michigan in the summer, <laughs> Kimberly. I was trying to avoid that. Okay, so um, cut out your template. And then um, one thing you can do, one thing I teach in our membership is, um, in order to avoid the paper getting trapped underneath your nail and when you when you nail it through the paper you're going to push paper into your wood okay so you'll have um little chunks of paper everywhere when you pull your template off so one thing you can do um just kind of a quick remedy here is take a nail or a pen or a pencil and just go around and poke a hole everywhere there is a mark so on your template if you want to put a hole everywhere then when you go to nail your um nail into your board you won't be pushing that paper because your nail will be going through that open spot okay so that eliminates a lot of the um paper that gets stuck <laughs> you don't know the difference oh we got um we got a couple michigan michigan people here huh Cool. Akanak Island. I'm going to have to do some more exploring around Michigan. I don't even remember um, where it was. Is there a Fox Lake or something? It's like one of the little lakes off of the Great Lakes. 
somewhere around there, I think, is where I've been. And then I have family in Wisconsin, um, so I've been on that side a little bit, but I've never spent much time around the Great Lakes. Okay, so you can um, poke holes if you want. And one more thing I do need to tell you. So I try to keep, <clears throat> excuse me, try to keep the template as simple as possible um, so that we wouldn't get mixed up with like a bunch of string collars and stuff like that. But there is one nail that you need to add, okay? So right up here on the beak of this flamingo, so if you count up, it's one, two, three, four nails from the bottom. You need to put a nail right here between those two nails, okay? Because um, otherwise it's gonna be harder for us to um, separate the black beak with the pink string. So make sure you add that hole. And um, one of the things I did not do is put the wing here. So if you're looking at the template, um, you see the wing so if you were to draw the wing it'd be about here if you want to do that in a different color you can add nails here so I wasn't gonna do that um, because I want it to be simple for y'all as far as um, how much string you had to buy but last minute I did decide to go ahead and add that wing so I'm gonna do it on my board but you do not have to okay so all I did was add four nails here so that I can do a different color string for the wing. Okay, so I'm still, um, I'm still with the stringers right now, but I'm about to come back to you painters, okay? All right, so um, here's what we're gonna do, okay? If you're a stringer, go ahead and lay your template down just to give you an idea of where you need to paint your um, palm leaves. So while it's flat, go ahead and lay this down just as a guide to where you're going to um, where you're going to put put your leaves, and then we'll all go ahead and paint the leaves together, okay? And then we'll be done painting. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the leaves. I think my canvas is dry and I can see where my flamingo is. So I'm good on my canvas. If you're stringing, um, go ahead and lay that flamingo down so you don't um, take your leaves over it. I know, doesn't that ocean color make you want to um, <laughs> go to the beach? That's what we've been talking about. Oh, Hawaii, that's somewhere I've never been. I really wanna go. Yeah, Hawaii would be amazing. I wanna do some like volcano tours in, um, in Hawaii. My parents got married in Hawaii and they went back um, when I, I think I was like a senior in high school, but they didn't take me, so I've never been. I've never been in Miami either. I feel like I've traveled a lot, but y'all are making me, <laughs> y'all making me feel like I haven't seen anything. All right, let's do leaves. So for leaves, I'm gonna use um, you can use a small flat brush. I'll probably use this one. Or you could use a small angled brush. I'll use one of these. So I have two really small flat brushes and I'm gonna try them both out and see which one I like the best. Okay, let's do leaves. So I'm gonna do two different colors of green, maybe even three, I don't know. So I'm gonna do the dark green first. So I have Kelly Green Apple Barrel. It does not matter which colors you use. Just grab something that is dark green and something that is light green. All right? And then I'm gonna use a little white too, probably. Oh, I bet Miami is busy. I like the um, I like the beaches that are quiet. You know, kind of off the beaten path that aren't super touristy. Um, I don't know if it's because I grew up down there or what, but all the little secret beaches are my favorite. All right, so I'm gonna take my small brush and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start up here in the corner. And again, if, if you're painting and you've already traced your flamingo, you can, um, you can kind of gauge where you want your palm leaves to be. If you're gonna string with me, go ahead and lay your template down. Okay, so we're gonna start with the dark green and I'm just gonna come off this corner here and I'm gonna draw a line, okay, just like that. 
And then we're going to draw a second line with the dark green. So just dark green, and I'm going to come down, okay? <clears throat> I don't even know how to say that. Tybee Island and explore Savannah, Georgia. Um, yeah, so I guess I lived in Georgia, but I was really super small when we lived in Savannah. So I don't remember anything about it. All right, so um, what I'm going to do now, same brush. I have my dark lines to kind of gauge where the... Um, palm leaves are going to go, and I'm going to dip in my lighter green now, okay? So lighter green, and I'm going to start at the end here, and I'm going to do like four little strokes off the end, just like that, okay? <laughs> yeah, I guess all the beaches kind of have their uh, pros and cons, all right? perks to all of them and and maybe some not so good things just depends on what you're in the mood for nightlife quiet life peace and quiet or crazy craziness <laughs> all right so I'm gonna work my way so I'm just doing small strokes all the way down here nothing fancy no worries about length or anything like that it just kind of Throw them on there, so both sides. This is fun art, not fine art. So I tell my tell my classes all the time: it's fun art, not fine art. Don't get don't get caught up in the details here. Okay, doing the same thing on the other leaf. Start at the top, work your way down. Oh, flamingos might be a fun um, theme for our subscription box. I hadn't thought of that. Anybody in the box? Anybody in the subscription box here? What do you think about flamingo theme? I hadn't thought of that one. I've got the next two months planned out, but then it's kind of fair game. I got, I got a summer month we need a theme for. If you're not in the box, you should be. It's open until tomorrow only. Um, we just opened it a couple days a month for the following month. So um, the Creative Alley box, it's so fun, y'all. You get several projects shipped to your door. And then we do a live like this inside a private group. And it's also faith-based. Um, and the ladies are amazing. So make sure if you're interested make sure you sign up by tomorrow you can go to holyrustic.com and um, right there on the main page it says creative outlet box and you can click that and sign up Ooh, ice cream would be cute gnomes yes gnomes would be fun hmm I think um, I think inside that group we're gonna do some voting and we'll let y'all come up with a theme maybe like once a once every few months or something. Okay, so once you get that done, I'm going to go back and um, fill them in a little bit. So I'm going to take a little bit of white with that light green. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of dab it. I'm just going to make a lighter green than what I already have. So a little white, a little light green. I do want it to be a contrast to what I've already got going on. Um. All right, and then I'm just gonna go back over. So that's definitely a contrast. So I'm going right back over where I was and then kind of in between to fill that in a little bit. So you just kind of play with it until you get it looking the way you like it. You can add, um, add some more of these little lines. I'm going to throw some in between here, make it look a little fuller, and I might go back with some more of the, the 
the non-diluted green. So I just want it to look fuller. So I'm just going back over this. Um, so we've started doing the free, uh, like one free class a month in here, inside this group. So that's probably what we'll just keep doing. All right, so I'm just going back and adding some green. Yeah, so as of now, we, we do one um, class here in the group a month. Um, we do our BOGO paint, our BOGO kit paint. Um, right now we do it on our main page, so that's once a month. And then um, we have a paint and string membership, which is not currently open to new members. But in that group, we do this once a week. And with that group, um, we do creative business too. So inside our membership, you get rights to use our designs for, to sell. So our free classes are just personal only, personal use only. Um, and then our paid workshops, uh, like our Hello Summer one that we have, the $10 class, those are our designs we give you commercial rights to, so you can use them in your paint studio, you can use them on Etsy, whatever you want. So our paid virtual classes come with commercial rights. <laughs> um, yeah, the string, a lot of people say that, and I, I do, like we started our studio as a string art studio in 2018, and people seem to love it or hate it. And that's okay. Um, I, by the way, I'm just kind of mixing my greens and going um, over. So I'm sticking with lighter colors on the left side of this branch. And then I'm going to go back with darker on the right side. But if you've only tried string art once, I would suggest maybe trying it again. Um, because when I first tried it, I was I thought it was really hard, but I'm very stubborn, and I wanted to do it. <laughs> so I kept going, and now I love it, and it's my favorite, and I've built an entire business around string art. So, um, yeah, if you've only tried it once, you should you should check it out. And if you try to do it yourself, you should um, you should. You should try one of our classes. You might you might like it. <laughs> that one I've never tried to knit or crochet. Okay, I'm getting back into my darker color now, the one that I made the original um, branch with, and I'm just brushing that in. Okay, I like some contrast here in my palm leaves. Sunset colors, between the blue and the teal, working from the center out to create a sunset look and then blend it all. Yes, you could do that. Um, so let me, let me, okay, sunset colors in between the blue and the teal, working from the center out. So do you mean like a circular pattern, like reds, oranges, yellows, is that what you're thinking? Um, yeah, you could do something like that if that's what you're asking about. All right, so on the other side, I'm gonna pick up more of my dark green and just a little bit of the lighter green, and I'm gonna go back through here, okay? Yeah, definitely go for a sunset. Try it, see what it looks like. It's just paint, you can always go over it. Be as creative as you wanna be. So, just getting some color through here. Aren't these fun?
We should have um, mixed us up some fruity drinks, little umbrellas, pineapples. We might actually feel like we're <laughs> in the ocean sand. No sun, just the view. Yeah, you could do that. Um, you could definitely do that with the reds, orange, and yellows. You could even do it as like a side-to-side -side ombre effect, kind of like we did here. I'm not sure about the blue on top, but if you wanted to, um, I would probably start from the teal and work with um, like yellows, oranges, and reds and kind of do what we did with the blue. So the right sides are a little bit darker. I'm just doing small strokes. And then I think I'm gonna put some lighter ones back in here. Yeah, no problem. Let us know how it turns out. That was way too light. How y'all's leaves coming along? This is one of those things. Once I start, I just keep going. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to put down the brush. <laughs> I just love all the different shades of green. You know, I was thinking earlier, I haven't seen uh, many pictures in here of finished craft kits. I don't know what's going on. We've been shipping them. Y'all not painting them or what? Haven't seen, um, haven't seen much of your work lately. It's almost the end of the month too. So, uh, Connect 4 is going to be coming to an end soon. Yeah, no problem, Paula. It's fun. I just like to connect with y'all. You know, I, I hang out with my um, subscription box and membership people a lot. Um, but I like to know the rest of you too. So that's why we started adding um, monthly paint classes. And, you know, I always love to throw some string art in there. So, all right. I think we're done with our painting. How'd it go? Do you love your background? Seems like uh, you probably do since we've been talking about the ocean a whole lot. <laughs> it's got us all in the mood. Okay, actually, we're not done painting, are we? Um, we still have a flamingo, but if you're stringing, once you get your leaves done, you're ready to nail. So let me show them real quick. I left one nail so I can show you what to do. Okay, so... Um, Looks like I've slung some paint here. Well, shoot. I'm such a messy painter, y'all. I get more paint on me than I get on anything I'm painting ever. <laughs> and I sling it everywhere. Okay, so um, what you want to do, you can tape your template down if you want. Okay, so put a couple pieces of tape just so it doesn't move once you get it where you want it. So you're going to put... Not sure what I did with my template. Let's see. There it is. So you're gonna line this up in the center with your bottom nail um sitting in the sand. So I have mine about right here. So you don't wanna you don't wanna completely touch that last nail to the bottom of your wood because you're gonna kind of split that end off. Um but once you get that taped down, everywhere you have a hole, you're going to take your one inch nails. And don't ever use the brad nails because they don't have a head on them. And <laughs> you're not going to be, if you try to use those brad nails that don't have the heads, um, you're not going to have anything to string on because it's just going to slip off the top. So that's why on the supply list, I'm always like, not brad nails. Do not use brad nails. All right, so you're going to um, hammer this in about halfway. And that's it. So everywhere you have a hole, hammer those in. See, it's about halfway. Um, 
If you can wiggle these nails at all, they're not in far enough because once you start yanking string on those nails, they're gonna pop off. So make sure they're all secure in the wood and you cannot move any of your nails at all, okay? Again, you do need to add this one nail here for the beak. You don't have to add the wing nails, but you can if you want. All right, and I'm gonna leave you stringers to it. Okay, while I paint with everyone else and then hopefully by the time we're done painting the flamingo y'all will be done nailing and we can do our string okay any questions we good we all caught up ready to go so Shania hi um we've only done the background so far okay and then so we've done the background we started at seven and we finished that now we're going to paint the flamingo and the people that are doing the string art are going to be nailing their board all right okay let's do this it's time to paint the flamingo so i'm going to go back to my white and i'll probably stick with my small flat brush well probably not as small as i was using let's see i would use maybe like a half inch Actually, I think I'm gonna use my angled brush. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and paint the flamingo white first. All right, so you should still be able to see your line. So I'm just taking that angled brush and I'm going to go over the flamingo with a base coat of white. get more white I never have enough white you'd think I'd learn I guess it's better to have less and need more than the other way around it's half the time with the other colors I'm scooping them all back into the bottles when I'm done painting <laughs> all right Oh no, that blue is hard to, it's hard to see my lines. I may just have to wing it. <laughs> Flamingo style. Alright, so this is just, um, going to make it easier for us to paint over and so that it's not so translucent Let's see oh, I'm having such a hard time here Let's see can y'all see yours Still painting the background. That's okay. That's fine. Go at your own pace. It's not a race. You'll be able to catch up later if you need to. Okay, so um, now we're going to start on our pinks. So I think I'm going to use 
Pink Parfait by Apple Barrel as my base pink color. I'm going to be incorporating um, white still. And then I want a darker pink. Um, like I have this dragon fruit, which is Americana. I don't know if that's dark enough. I'm going to get a little bit of cranberry too for Apple Barrel just in case. Like I said, I basically never use the same colors twice. I just grab what I see. <laughs> All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, use the same brush. I'm gonna keep the white on it. I'm gonna dip in my light pink and I'm just gonna go over the white. Even if it's still wet, it's no big deal. Just like that. I think this is a lighter pink than I used before, but I kind of like it. I think once I get the darker pink in, it'll be perfect. Um, go ahead and get these little parts of the legs right here with your light pink. I'm gonna go ahead and fill those in. Still using my angled brush. Um, if you're new to the group, we do play a game in here in the Craft Kit group uh, each month. It's usually something different. Um, and you do get an entry for participating in our free class. So um, this month it's Connect Four and there's still plenty of time to play. So you basically have to build four tasks just like the Connect Four game. Um, so from the bottom up, you post your tasks in the group with the hashtag Connect Four. Actually, I think it's May Connect Four is the hashtag. And then at the end of the month, you post your cards with all your finished tasks on there, and then we draw um, for a gift card. So for every four you get on your card, you get an entry into the gift card drawing for the month. And I believe I looked at the gift card earlier today, and I think it was like overwhelmingly Amazon. <laughs> Has anybody else looked lately? I think y'all have all voted Amazon was the big one. So I think we have a lot of new people, so make sure to check that out. It should be under announcements, the game card, if that's something you want to do. Just something fun to do every month. I think my, I think I screwed my, my um, beak up. We'll fix it. Okay, so I have my light pink on here now. And I'm going to go back with the um, darker pink and start brushing that on. All right, so I'm gonna take, oh, what should I use? I don't know, should I do the really dark or the medium? Yes, you can watch it later. It'll be available on replay inside this group. Yeah, you like playing the games, Tamara. I think, I think it's just something fun. I mean, you're gonna, if you're gonna do the, the crafts and stuff anyways, might as well, might as well be some incentive, a little bit of fun. I think I'll go with the darkest one first. And what I'm gonna do is um, trace my wing with that dark. We're gonna blend it in some here in a minute, but I'm gonna trace it. I'm gonna put some dark edges here along the, the bottom. Um, and I'm gonna brush some along here. 
So it's not going to stay like this. We're going to kind of work that in. Okay, so I'm just going to, I'm kind of using my angle brush to put some of that cranberry color into the flamingo. Then I'm going to um, kind of go back over it with white to lighten that up through here. So this is just another one of the things we're gonna, um, I'm gonna soften this edge a little, so I'm going over that. Okay, I'm gonna pick up some white. Yes, you can. Um, hey Pat, you gonna paint it later? Thank you. Yeah, you can watch it later. It'll be inside this group. Um, and you'll be able to do it at your own pace. So, yes, we will keep this video up for you to access later if you want to paint on your own. All right, so I'm just kind of brushing some white back in. I want this to have some different variations, some different shades. Um... So I did that dark cranberry and now I'm putting some white back in, softening this a little bit. So just kind of keep with the strokes of the, um, so you know, keep your strokes arched here, follow that curve. I might add some of this medium pink to it too. I think that might be cute. I still have my angled brush, just brushing that white. So just play around with it until you get it the way you like it. You've been a busy bee lately, haven't you, Pat? You got all your um, creative outlet box painted. <clears throat> and then the bee hive that you won been doing all kinds of crafting I've been seeing I got a little all right I'm picking up some of my I'm gonna try some of this medium here How are we doing on the nailing? If you're doing string art, y'all getting it? Yeah, so I'm adding a, a third color here, third pink. And I think I like that. A bee box. That would be cute. I do love bees. There's lots of cute bee crafts. We have a couple on our website. I see lots of bee stuff this time of year. Super cute. So I'm just playing around with these colors. I'm just adding some pinks and some whites. Brushing it, blending it until I until I get it the way I like it. So I just want the wing to stand out a little bit, separate from the rest of it. So I'm, I'm touching my brush super light. Okay, so I'm not, I'm not doing heavy, I'm not being heavy-handed. I'm just barely touching that brush to the canvas. The third pink around the neck is that the medium one that I picked up or is that the darker one <laughs> I don't I've just been brushing I haven't even paid attention 
I just start picking colors up and where they land, they land. Butterfly. You got all kinds of ideas, Marie. We should, yeah, butterflies are actually my favorite little creature. So I would love that. I think I'm about, I think I'm about done here with the pink. So fun, all these pinks. Love it. It's a summary, too. Oh, the uh, butterfly fly was Camden's idea. Good. Yeah, I might. Said I am, um, got everything planned out for the next couple months. I just need, I think, actually, I think I have pretty much everything planned out except for like one month in the summer. But I think I've, even after that, I've got everything pretty much, <laughs> pretty, I'm a planner. So it's, uh, in fact, I enjoy it. So it's pretty easy for me to figure out what we're doing. I don't know about that summer month though. I um, I did think about having y'all figure out what you wanted to do, but the problem with that is if you pick something I've already got planned, then I'll have to tell you we already got that planned. <laughs> and then the surprise is ruined. All right, I think I'm gonna quit with these pinks because I could just keep going on and on. What y'all think? How you doing? I think I'm gonna leave it like this, okay? I'm gonna switch over to black to do the beak. And actually, um, what do I wanna do? I think I'm gonna do a really, really light pink. So I'm gonna take my pink and a little bit of white on my plate and mix it. I want it like super, super, super light, okay? Like almost completely white, just a little bit of a pink tint to it. Um. So I'm just mixing my white and my pink. And then right, so I'm gonna do this little section right here on the template. So that part of the, the nose or the beak. Super light pink there. And now I'll switch over to my black. So I'm going to pick a pointed brush or um, a small round brush. Um, oh, gotcha. Maybe, maybe I'll just have your kids help me out, Marie, when it comes time for summer. We can um, secretly conspire about what theme to give y'all so you don't know. Okay, so we're going to black. We're going to do the rest of the beak and the legs. So just small pointed brush. Go ahead and put uh, the little round eye. And then... Um, the beak so I 
I definitely lost my outline on the beak here. So I'm going to have to fix that. The angle's off a little bit. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do the legs, and then I'll go back up and fix that a little bit. Um, can't wait to see your all's flamingos. When we're all done. All right, I'm just tracing over these outlines here for the legs of the flamingo. I'm using the same pointed brush. I love that you're painting with your kids, Marie. That's a fun uh, weeknight project, spending some time together. I try to get my, my teenagers to paint with me and they think I'm crazy. Maybe one day, once they're out of this weird phase. My youngest used to like to do string art with me until um, she got too cool for her mama. So the middle school age, now it's all friends. I think they'll come around one day though. To get out of psychotic teenage years. <laughs> see. All right, so I'm just going over this with black, and then I'm going to do some um, a few white highlights. <laughs> I feel like that knee is swollen. That looks like a really big knee. I think I might have traced that bigger than it should have been. Let's see. I'm going to widen this one a little bit so they match. Can't have a flamingo with a chicken leg. <laughs> Let me try to proportion this a little bit. I think that's better. They do come around, huh? <laughs> That's good to know, Lisa. Keeping my fingers crossed. It's like I have two girls and it's kind of like they just flipped a switch on me at, once they hit a certain age. Okay, I think we're about done with that. Let me rinse this out. I'm gonna fix my... Um, Oh, my paper towels, I can't find them. And I'm gonna fix my little beak here. And we're about done with the paint part. It's like I need some baby wipes, got it on my sand. Okay, I'm just going back with my light pink to fix this area. Here. I'm gonna brush just like a couple strokes of white on the legs and the um, beak and then we're pretty much done with the paint side of things and then I'll jump over with you stringers how are we doing on the nail and Sadie fairy theme oh that's cool Sadie I wouldn't have thought of that one I have to give some thought to that. That's a good idea. Do you like fairies? Oh, Lisa, 24, 21, 17, 15. <laughs> God help you is right. Goodness. <laughs> you poor thing. <laughs> oh, man. So you got, you got through it with one or two of them, and now you're going through it again with an, another two, huh? I was looking for a small liner brush. Let me see. All right, I'm just gonna pick up a little white. Um, I'm just gonna brush a little white right through here on the beak. And then down here on the legs. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's cool. I like the fairy idea. Alright, I'm just kind of brushing some white onto the legs. That's still a little wet. too bright. I'm going back over that with black. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah. The things we do for love, Lisa. <laughs> I'm gonna call it quits here. What do you think? We're done. Flamingo is finished. Cute. Hope y'all enjoyed that. Yeah, fairies would be different. It's definitely, I don't think I've done any fairy crafts. <laughs> yep, love gets this, Lisa. I get it. <laughs> All right, our flamingos painted. So um, if you are paint team paint only, we are finished for tonight. Um, oh, you know what we're doing? We've already decided what we're doing next month. We're doing the um, porch laners, which I have been the worst about dragging my feet on that supply list. So I am going to get it done this week, I promise. I, um, I kind of didn't want to post it before we got this done because I didn't want a bunch of confusion on which class was when and what supply list goes with what. Um, but we are going to do the porch leaner sign the first or second week of June. Let me show you real quick. So if you're here, I'll go ahead and tell you that you need a six foot board. So I have the 10, I think it's the 10 inch. Let me, let me measure real quick. Yeah, so I have a, a nine, a nine foot wide pine board, which I think they call the 10 inch board. It's more like 9.25 or something like that. So 10 inch pine six feet tall and then you can order your stencils they have the vertical stencils at essentialstencil.com um, and if you use code holy rustic 10 you get 10 percent off of your vertical stencil order actually you can use that as much as many times as you want so that is a good code um you can order all the stencils you want but for our porch sign class you need the vertical stencil I'm doing a patriotic sign, but you do not have to. You can order any of them you want. The process will be the same. This one says, God bless America. Um, so I'll have a date for you probably by the end of the week, and I'll go ahead and get a supply list out. But if you want to jump ahead, you do need to order your essential, st your essential stencils so that you have them in time for our class. Um, and I would go ahead and get your six foot pine board y'all know there's a lumber shortage <laughs> so don't wait till the last minute um go look for your pine board six feet tall uh nine i think it's a 10 inch board 10 inch wide so we're going to do that in june that's our free class of the month for june so these are kind of back to back since we are doing one late this month and then we're doing one early next month because i want to put it out for the fourth of july okay Oh, thank you, Paula. I'm glad they make your week. I'm, I'm glad you joined. Three home sweet home, the porch signs. I got two Paulas here. You did three of the home sweet home uh, porch signs. Is that what you're saying? With, oh, with essential stencils? Yeah, they're the best. Um, they're the best as far as like the reusable stencils. Um, and then we have we're starting to sell a maker studio mesh stencils in our um, store so those are really neat okay so if you're stringing let's do this who's done nailing y'all ready all right if you're stringing let me know if you're ready yes they do clean up nice 
Yeah, I'm excited. So, um, porch signs are one of our biggest sellers in our shop. Um, we use a lot of vinyl stencils, but for the reusable, um, I like the essential stencils, and they've given us a code to share with you all to save 10%. It's Holy Rustic 10. Um, and since I was going to do a patriotic porch sign, I figured that would just be our free class of next month. So that's what we're doing. You're welcome, Zena. Make sure to post your um, your flamingos when you're done painting. I love seeing the finished the finished stuff. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start stringing. Nobody's told me not to. I don't know where you're at in the nailing, but um, again, you can always go back and catch up later. Now, this is my favorite. All right. So I'm super excited to string this flamingo and um, teach you. Oh, you're still painting. That's okay, uh, Tamara. You can catch up later. Um, so when it comes to string art, one of the most important things is layering. And um, we don't want this flamingo to look crazy with its legs outside its body and its beak inside behind its head. Okay. And I learned this the hard way because I strung, I spent a ton of time in the beginning on a really complicated Santa Claus, like the whole Santa Claus body. And when I got done, it had been layered all wrong. I had layered it all wrong and I'd wasted all that time and it looked insane. <laughs> so that was my biggest layering mistake and I learned from that. So here's what we're gonna do. Um, first, we're going to do the legs. So, black string, and this will be the easy part. So, we're going to do legs, body, beak. Okay, we want legs behind the body, and then we're going to do the body of fl flamingo, and then we want the beak on the outside of the body. <laughs> um, so, so as long as you can find this group again tomorrow, you can definitely find the video because we keep all of our free tutorials inside um, the guides tab. So you'll click, you'll go to the craft kit group, click guides, and then um, we have a couple folders there with tutorials and freebies in it. Okay, so you're gonna take your black string and tie a double knot onto uh, this bottom nail here okay so double knot bottom nail now I like to super glue this knot because it um it will unravel on you when you're pulling it so put a little bit of super glue right there on the knot and then we're going to cut this tail off so this extra little piece of string that we don't need go ahead and cut that off it's just easier to do that in the beginning because I've seen um, people cut the wrong string if they wait till the end. All right, so we're gonna work our way up one side of the legs and then down the other side of the legs. And this part is gonna be a little bit different than the rest of the body. So we wanna do kind of a border um, and make it thick so that it can be seen really well. So what I'm gonna do when I'm, when I'm doing single line string art, which is what this is, you're gonna do a figure eight. So figure eight between these two nails. Okay, good. Yeah, as long as you can find that, Zena, you're good to go. All right, so figure eight and then loop around just like that, okay? I'm gonna hold this up so you can see it, maybe. <laughs> the board's too big. So figure eight and loop around. Okay, so we're going straight up. What I'm gonna do now, take my string up to the next two nails, figure eight, loop around just like that. Okay, and we're gonna do that all the way up to the flamingo body. So every two nails, figure eight, loop around, figure eight, loop around. Now, you do wanna take it all the way to the body because otherwise it's gonna look like you have a floating flamingo <laughs> with its legs detached and we don't want that to happen. Okay, so these are all things I learned the hard way in the beginning. So we have come to the bird. So what I'm gonna do, since this is gonna be covered with pink, I'm gonna just go ahead and cross over to the top of the next leg, which is um, two nails to the left. 
And now I'm gonna work my way down with a figure eight and a loop. Okay, now we're at the knee part, so figure eight loop. Figure eight and loop. Same thing all the way down to where we started. Okay, there we go. We got our flamingo legs, they're done. Um, I'm gonna tie a double knot so you can cut you can cut this string and tie a double knot, or you can do this fancy knot that I like to do. Um, I take it and loop it, twist, lay over the nail, and pull. Okay, so loop, twist, pull. If you've strung with me before, you've heard me tell the story a million times, but that knot was taught to me by my husband who grew up making fishing lures, and that is the knot that they used comes in handy with string art. All right, I put a little bit of glue on there so that so it doesn't unravel, and then I'm gonna cut the string and make sure not to cut your good string there. Easy peasy, legs are done, okay? Now, even though we're on black, we do not wanna go up and do our beak because that would make it look like the beak was behind the bird. So string art is very 3D. And you have to um, really think about how you are layering your colors. Okay, so we're going to do the body next. And this will be the hardest part of this design. So it doesn't matter where you tie on. I'm going to do, so this is what I'm doing. I decided on a light pink um, string. And then I'm going to use this dark pink for the wing. That's why I added that. I couldn't decide which pink I wanted to do, so I was like, I'm just going to add the wing, and I'll use them both. <laughs> oh, we've been going an hour and a half. Goodness. So that is one thing about paint and string. Um, this is why a lot of, well, most of our workshops, we split into two days. So we, string, we paint the first day, and then we string the second day. So I know it is a lot but it's so fun. <laughs> All right, a little glue and then cut the tail. Okay, so with this shape, it's gonna be a little bit of a trick. So I'm doing a border right here on the tail. This is like a um, um, an indented tail here so you want to follow the shape of the bird so use your template if you have to to do this border all the way around the outside of the flamingo we do not need to go here to our beak because that's going to be black so I'm cutting my pink string across right here and then I'm working down the neck of the bird all the way down until I get back where I was okay so that border is just going to help us stay inside of the shape. Now, if you did the wing nails, you don't need to do any, you don't need to worry about those. We're just going to be crossing right over top of those nails. We're going to fill in this whole space with um, the base color. So keep your string tight and start wrapping it back and forth and up and down all different directions inside the flamingo. Okay, I'm working my way up the neck, I'm going to get the head, I'm going all different directions. So the goal here is to fill in the gaps. So everywhere you see a gap, you're going to maneuver your string to cover that gap. So even though it is very um, random, there is a little bit of thought process behind it too because you want your string to be consistent throughout and you want it to um, cover the gaps so we're just going to keep stringing all different directions You can use these nails to wrap your string around if you want to.
and I've done this a lot so I'm, I'm probably going a lot faster than you will if you've never done it before that's okay take your time it's not a race Fill in those gaps. Be careful not to get, um, you know, like a pattern going. Um, you want it to look pretty random. And there's no right or wrong amount of string to use. It's just basically a personal preference as to how much string you like um, and how full you want it to be. So it's totally up to you. See how that popped off? You want to keep it tight. And you want to make sure you're keeping the shape. So one of the hardest things about um, stringing when you're first starting out is keeping the shape of this flamingo. So watch what happens if I come up here. Okay, so if I start stringing right here, outside of the border that we originally set, I'm gonna have these random strings here between the neck and the body. And it is not gonna look like a flamingo when we're done, okay? So you wanna be very mindful of where your boundary or your border is, okay? So we bordered this for a reason. You wanna keep this open. So keep checking this area and make sure you can see nothing but wood. If there's string there, you wanna back it up. Same thing here. If you're if you see string right here, you want to back that up, okay? And then no pink string down here in the legs either. So the sooner you catch a mistake when you're doing string art, the better, because um, it's a lot easier to to back out if you catch it early than if you've strung the whole flamingo and then notice that you have string where it shouldn't be. So kind of watch as you go so you can um, catch that in advance before you're done and your day's ruined. <laughs> Basically you just want the shape to be, you want everything to be consistent. So you don't want like half the flamingo to be super um, full of string and then the other half of the flamingo to be um, you know, empty, basically. If you like this, you'll have to join our um, Hello our Hello Summer workshop with the popsicles. That one's going to be fun. And it is split into two days, so it um, makes it a little easier when you get to paint one day and string the next. So I could get this really full if I wanted, but I kind of like it like this. I want to see, I like that I can see the whole beach in the background. Um, so again, it's totally up to you how much of the string you want to use. Just want to make sure it's about the same all the way through. Put some more through here. to wrap this up and go to the black. I'm going to work my way down to the body and put a little bit more <clears throat> before I finish. Just make this a little fuller so when I use that darker pink it'll stand out.
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and tie it off. So wherever you want is fine. Any of the outside nails, just do the twist and loop. And then a little glue and cut that off. Okay, so we're almost done. Now we just want to do our beak, and then we'll do the. I'll do the darker um, pink stripe. So I'm going back to my black. We just have this little area to do. Um, I am making. Well, I wonder. Do you think it'll look weird to do the whole beak in black? Because we did like a light pink, and then a black. We'll just see what it looks like. I may have to. Not sure if I should do that all in um, black or pink. Jug it done. Painting your flamingo. Awesome. I can't wait to see it. Did you have fun? <laughs> all right. to see once we get going here. I think it'll be okay all black, but I think um, I think that's the lightest pink I have anyways. Okay, I'm just going to fill this in with black. I think it'll be okay. Alright, so just stay inside this shape. Good, I'm glad y'all had fun. You'll have, to, you'll have to get a picture together and post it. So with this one, we just want, um, we want it to be about the same consistency as the flamingo. Do you think that's too much? Uh, that might be too much black on the beak. I think I should have brought the pink down some more. Um, let me think. I wonder if white would look okay. Let me think. Let me look up a flamingo. I can't think of how they look right now. Other than the one I just painted. I think that's too much. So... Yeah, I think that's too much too much black. So here's what I'm gonna do. Um I might do white, just I think I'm gonna do white. So I just pulled that back off and find my white. I'm just doing white because I don't think I have a pink that's lighter than the one I already used. So you could, whatever color you use for um, the flamingo, you could just continue that down a little further. I just think that's way too big of a beak there. So I'm going to um, shorten this a little bit. So last minute plan, last minute change. And I'm gonna bring it down, so let's see, I may, one, two, three. I'm going to bring it down to right here. Okay. So I'm going to leave the last one, two, three, four, five, six nails. I'm going to leave for the black. I think this will look better. But yeah, whatever color you're using, if you're already using light pink, you could just continue that on into the further down. But that, just doing that, all that beak and black, I think will be just too much. Yeah, this is going to be much better.
Okay, I'm gonna tie off here. I think that's a lot better, don't y'all? <laughs> that flamingo looked like its whole um, head was beak. <laughs> this off. Now I'm going to finish this black real quick. So I'm already tied on with the black. I left it on there when I backed it up. Perfect. Much better. Now you could add an eye if you wanted. You could put a nail there. Um, I have not had much luck with eyeballs and string art. I've, I mean, you could put, you really can't make a circle with nails that close together. Um, so really the best thing you could do would probably be to put one nail there and you could maybe wrap it with brown, uh, black string but I would not try to put multiple nails in a circle because it's going to be really crowded and it's not going to be easy to string so yeah you can do your, your string tomorrow Tamara you know we use I usually split them up like that anyway so um yeah almost done that's cute the white uh definitely made a difference here so if you're not doing the wing, you'll be done. You'd be done right now. Okay. So the only thing that I have left is this dark pink wing. I thought it would be cute to add on, and I'm gonna do it the same way that I did the legs with the figure eight and the loop. So I'm just tying on. It's the same process. So. Once you, get, once you get the hang of it, it gets a lot easier because it's, you know, so repetitive. Alright, so I'm going to do a figure eight and a wrap around and then figure eight and a wrap around. So you could also, um, you could kind of fill in this whole section too if you wanted. You could do like a triangle and fill that in. Um, honestly, I think I liked it better without that there. But it might be cute with a border all the way around too. So we could do a dark pink border around the outside. I don't know. What do you think? I think it looks better without it. I might take it off. I think I'm going to take it off. That really, do you like it? I don't know. I don't know about it, Paula. I can't decide. It just, it looks kind of weird to me. Um, I might leave it off. Let's see. I think it's cute without it. I think I'm going to leave it off tonight, and I'm going to look at it with fresh eyes tomorrow. And it might be one of those things I could, like, mix the two pink colors in or maybe I should have just done it um, maybe I should have just done it dark pink um, I do have like the variegated uh, crochet thread too with the with the um, several different color pinks and white so that might be something you could do too all right, I'm gonna leave the wing off. I like it better without it. It's cute. All right, so I'm done. I'll get that little chunk off in a minute. <laughs> okay, what do you think? Turned out good. So we have our paint and string, and we have our paint. We've done both of them in one night, so it's been a very successful, and um, we've accomplished a lot. <laughs> All right. Well, I think I'm all talked out. I don't have anything else to tell you. And meet us here in a, a couple weeks for our porch leaner sign. Make sure to order your essential stencils. Um, and if you want in the subscription box, 
tomorrow is the last day, so you'll need to go ahead and do that. But otherwise, we're done. Thank you. And make sure to post your finished paints or string in the group and hashtag it MayConnect4, and you may just win a gift card. All right, thank you all for joining. I really appreciate it. It was fun. Sorry it was kind of long, but that's just the nature of paint and string art. So um, I'll see you guys soon. Have a great rest of the week. Bye.